thank you all so much for being here. Um, I am really excited by what I believe is about to happen, and I'm really looking forward to some of your feedback, some of your questions after, after my short presentation today. Um, with that, let's talk about an industry everyone seems to have an opinion about. Let's talk about journalism. I'd like you to take a moment and just read through this quote. It's from Walter Cronkite, one of the most trusted and respected journalists of all time. And as you're reading it, and you're considering its meaning, I'd like you to ask yourself this question. Does this have anything to do with the journalism of today? If you answered no, I want you to know that you are definitely not alone. Forgive me, the clicker's not working here. That's because journalism has issues, okay? 40 years ago, 50 companies owned the majority of American news media. It was local, it was generally trusted, it was effective at what it did, and it was considered a high quality source of information. That is not the case anymore. Today, a handful of global companies own the majority of American news media. Editorial investment is being reduced. Industry pay is terrible. The public perceives it as politically biased. And to top it all off, being a news reporter was named as the worst career in America by CareerCast. Being a newspaper publisher was once considered one of the most prestigious positions in a community. Today, Utah's news is being run by individuals with next to zero experience in daily news. We've seen the effects of a broken business model um, with staff size reductions and pay cuts. We've seen this locally. The Davis Clipper, a 100-year-old institution, announced just a few weeks ago that it was shuttering in December permanently. Um, folks, print news is coming to an end, okay? But still, there are those who are trying to kick the can down the road by going behind paywalls online. Um, it really begs the question, what can be done here? What can be done? I believe my company is the solution to these problems. This is what we're about. This is what I'm after with this platform. Produce higher quality and higher productivity news content exclusively online and be able to sponsor that content with a lower cost suite of advertising products as a result. When we are accomplishing this, there is not a news outlet in the state of Utah and there is not a local news outlet in the country that has a credible response. Um, here, I think there's a lot of market share that can be captured. And given the growth of Utah County and the state of Utah in general, these numbers you see up here on the board could easily be looked at as conservative. Something to keep in mind here is that this model, which I'm going to explain to you in detail in just a moment, can be replicated anywhere in the country. I think there's an enormous opportunity here to generate revenue through advertising and marketing and public relations services. Um, not only do I think we've solved some pretty major editorial issues, such as increasing news quality and higher productivity, but I also think we've solved a pretty major market inefficiency here by cutting out the boutique advertising middleman. Okay. My argument is essentially this. If most advertising products are going to wind up on traditional media and social media, involve SEO services or, or Google ads, why on earth do we need companies separate from news media for this? Why can news media not provide all of this without the added cost and the inefficiency of working with multiple companies? In essence, I believe that if we have not solved the problem, we have given ourselves a competitive advantage so large that our direct competitors will be unable to respond without changing everything they do. Um, this is where things get a little complex, but I'm going to try and explain this to the best of my ability. Um, but let's start with an easy one. Um, we gain market share by being exclusively online, okay? This is a trend everyone has been anticipating in news for about 20 years now. No surprises there. We also gain market share by implementing approaches and methods and applications I developed during my time as an executive editor. Not only do my approaches eliminate the perception of political bias, but whenever and wherever my approaches are used, two things happen. One, qualitative feedback, 
via story comment sections and social media radically improves. And two, website user traffic in increases by a lot. And we can do all of this without sacrificing journalistic ethics and story quality. Um, I'd like to take a moment to digest that because this is a change in consumer behavior that every newsroom in the country has been craving since the dawn of Google Analytics. Let me explain what I mean. Typically, a newsroom is forced to choose between high page views and low credibility or high credibility and low page views. And this antagonism really resolves itself when my approach is used. And it's immediate and it's measurable and it can be replicated. I got curious about what was going on here because I believe it's rooted in neuroscience. And so I'm actually in the beginning stages of working with the Smart Lab at Utah Valley University to prove it. If you're unfamiliar with the, what the Smart Lab does, they use physiological changes in the body to measure the effectiveness of advertising campaigns. But I was curious how this could be used for news and editorial. And so if we're granted approval to do the research, not only do I believe that my methodologies will show up in Google Analytics and in word clouds via qualitative feedback. But I think we can track it through micro expressions of the face and eye movement tracking and changes in the brain. Because when all is said and done, I think what we're actually tracking here is trust in news. Next, I also believe my company has solved a pretty major um, productivity issue plaguing newsrooms across the country. There's a name for it. We call it the two story standard. No one can figure out how a reporter can write two stories in one day without sacrificing the quality of their stories. We see this played out in our local media. The Salt Lake Tribune stories are very well researched, lots of depth, but regularly their reporters write one story or less than one story a day. We also see its opposite on KSL and in Gephardt Daily and on St. George News. Um, it's true, their reporters can write more than one story a day but very often their stories are only a few paragraphs long and lacking in context and in details. Um, consider this problem solved when my approach is used. And when this is combined with data-driven advertising methods and cost efficiencies, not only are we a better all-around product, but we're also a less expensive product. All of this, though, doesn't mean that the market is just going to accept us, okay? Um, but I have a hunch that by leveraging social media early on to get our news content in front of the people of Utah County and the state of Utah, and by increasing our credibility by joining associations such as the Society for Professional Journalists, we will gain traction in a hurry. But in the end, what I believe is going to really um, be the sticking point is that our news quality and our advertising practices are going to speak for themselves. Here's a little bit about me, and I know there are a few blanks on the page, um, TBD. Um, I'm born and raised in rural Nebraska. I am a, uh, an award-winning political and investigative reporter. More recently, uh, I was the editor-in-chief of St. George News in southern Utah. And still more recently, I oversaw the, uh, the Daily Herald here in Provo and coterminously the Standard Examiner up in Ogden as, as executive editor. Okay. Um, and here is what I am asking for. And I would be so thrilled to discuss details with you after this uh, because I, I, I think we're worth it. I think we're worth it. Um, not only have we solved the issue of the broken business model in news media, um, but we've made some sincere strides in addressing the public's lacking trust in editorial. This is a completely new way news can go about its day-to-day -day operations. It can do so profitably and it can do so ethically while building trust, scientifically verifiable trust with its readers. We are different and we are better. Thank you so much. I'm happy to take your questions now. How's your wife doing? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> She's good. She is uh, supposed to be watching uh, from, from the hospital right now. Yeah. So wishing her well. <laughs> Just so you know, he is sacrificing being with his wife's side, who's pregnant with twins, is the hospital across the street. <laughs> so this is how important this is to him. 
Um, not that not that he's one of our clients, but he is. <laughs> um, question that they might want to look at is that your model of why you're, you're you're saying that advertising is different than other other papers, where their advertiser controls what is published. What's your kind of Okay. Um, yeah, a couple of layers to that question. Okay, and, and uh, let, let me let me try and simplify. Um, so right now, uh, what you do typically if you're a small business is you go to an advertising firm, you tell them what you need, um, you uh, you work with them to develop an effective campaign, and you pay them for their services. Then you take it to news media, and they ask you if you want to replicate it yourself or um, put the display ad in yourself. And so there are basically a duplicate. It's a duplication of services, effectively. Um, I guess the inverse of that is you don't go to the boutique advertising firm and you go straight to the news media company and their regional design desk uh, creates a display ad for you. It's not very high quality. There's no means testing. It's just okay and you're paying us for our, for our services. Um, once that is done, you have no other options. You can redo the ad. You can, you can pay to, to, to do a different ad. Um, what I am saying is that we can actually combine this, and cut out the inefficiency of that, and, and get the quality of the boutique advertising firm without, without that duplication of services. And that's a competitive advantage right now that, that is not seen in, in news media. I know everybody keeps telling me to hold it closer to my face. <laughs> Is what you just shared your method? You mentioned that throughout the process is that with my method, with my method, with this method, and I was trying to summarize just in like, in, in just a brief statement, if somebody said, so what is the uniqueness of your method? Um, did you just answer that? Was that it, what you just said? Or where is the uniqueness in the method? I mean, I, I see you combining two areas of media, one that's the advertising, one that's the newsroom, and you're trying to put them in the same space under an umbrella, but that doesn't actually, you still need both elements of expertise. So are you just stopping it at the profitability of one entity versus two entities? Or what is the methodology that I'm missing? That is an amazing question. I wish so badly. I could have um, gone into it in detail in a 10 minute presentation, but what I am discussing is a graduate level course in journalism in the methodology, okay? And which is why I try to just call it my method or the method. So let me, I guess, fill in some blanks for you without bogging you down in unnecessary details. And it's a great question, by the way. Thank you for asking it. Um, let me start here. When my approach is used, website user traffic, which is a huge indicator of the type of and how much advertising you're going to get, it's an immediate like month to month increase of 40 to 45%, just all of a sudden. Qualitative feedback, the positivity rates improved by a similar margins, very similar margins, okay? And so you need to get curious here about what is going on because if it's so easy, why isn't everybody else doing it? Why isn't everyone else doing it? And that is sort of what makes it propri uh, proprietary. But you're probably looking for the substance of what I'm talking about, OK? Students are taught in journalism school that uh, to use the inverted pyramid, which is um, taught in, in coursework, but also through the Associated Press as the proper way to format a story. Um, first and foremost, my uh, models go a, a step further because no one connects with their reader. They don't necessarily think about their reader writing the story. And so news works, generally speaking, in this way. Um, here's the information. Do without what you will. It's, it's, it's out of my hands at this point. Wrong. You need to make that connection and show relevancy to the reader's lives. Next, I made a big claim with political balance. And um, I call it the political filter when I teach it to, to, um, to my employees. Um, and this is a way for them to filter out what is the important information, the substance of the story, without getting bogged down in, in talking points, without getting um, uh, mired in their own politics, without um, 
without really making the mistakes we see that's so common on like CNN or Fox News or MSNBC, or, or sometimes it's on purpose, it's maybe not a mistake, but um, without doing these things, and when they're done really, really well, we see it immediately in qualitative feedback, immediately. But done over a long enough period of time, it really does build trust with the reader, and, and we see that in page views over, over the long haul. Um, I can show you a concrete example if you have time, but otherwise I think maybe I've gone on a little long um, and maybe move on to, to some more questions, but I'd be happy to show you a concrete example. Okay. Following up on that, would this be building trust in media similar to an Uber, Airbnb, or a share economy where you're actually tracking the users and their opinions about things that are written to determine trust by people's responses to the people, to the pages and stuff like that? Is that an element of this? Um, so I, I, I think not necessarily identical to that. Um, we, the trust I'm talking about is an emergent property of the data under underlying and the methodology underlying the approach, if that makes sense. So like, for instance, you can achieve qualitative feedback by like just, okay, I've, I've, I've read a story, now we're gonna survey you on, on your trust right now. Um, we can get that largely through story comment sections and through social media and, and, and things like that, but, but um, a direct surveying method, probably not, because we understand um, largely what the emergent properties of the methodology um, uh, are, and um, I'm trying to prove it scientifically that this can be measured physiologically in the body when they read a story. Yeah, kind of off of his question. So um, throughout the presentation, you kind of made comments about that you've made strides um, in your company to be able to uh, create this revolution in journalism. <laughs> um, but what I guess my question would be like, what evidence do you have or like specific examples of how you've done that? Um, take out your mobile device right now. Sure. And you're going to pull up your, uh, your web browser and you're going to search the following headline. Orem lawmaker drafting bill to ban hormone therapy, comma, surgery for transgender minors. Could you repeat that? I figured not everybody would have done that the first time. Thank you. Orem lawmaker drafting bill to ban hormone therapy, comma, surgery for transgender minors. You'll see the link uh, to, to the Daily Herald. Okay. Um, if everybody is, I guess, generally there, maybe a few folks are catching up. Here's what I'd like you to do. Just notice the headline. This is a controversial topic at the state level that this particular reporter covered um, using my methodology. Now I want you to scroll to the bottom and you're gonna see a, uh, like a little icon there for the comment section run by World's Table. Comments, yeah, and then it'll spin its wheels for a little bit and then it'll load. What do you notice about the comments? Because remember, this is a controversial story, a hot button issue. There's supposed to be four. There are. What's the first comment? Clearly written, well-rounded. Okay. Now I'm using this as an example. It would be silly to point to this as a one-off and be like, yay, we solved it. What I am saying is that we see this over and over. The audience's focus is not necessarily on us as a media and our agenda and how biased we are and how we've really failed the public to fairly report this issue. And I challenge you to read the story and notice how you feel and notice what's different about your experience compared to reading another outlet locally or nationally. Because we see this over and over. And this is why I say it's repeatable. It can be replicated. And we see this whenever and wherever this methodology is used. And we see it not just in the story comment sections, but on social media. And the story on social media got very similar feedback. Clearly written, 
well-rounded. And people notice that. And we see it over and over and over in the qualitative feedback when, when we compile it. So we did like a three-month and three-month comparison um, compared to when the methodology wasn't being used and when it was, 40% improvement in positive feedback. Okay. And I guess just like feedback on the presentation, right? That's the whole point of it. Yeah. Um, is don't, do you think that the, that kind of stuff should be in the presentation to show, you know, maybe you can have some quotes of like different people's comments from articles that have been written using your methodology. Yeah, actually a really great suggestion. Um, I, why didn't I think of that? I'm gonna do that, thank you. <laughs> okay, with that, we'll have one final question for you, which is what can the 1MC community do for you? Um, my degree is in journalism and economics, so double major. Um, and so I am not necessarily a, a salesperson at, at my core. I'm, I'm, I'm a news person and, um, and a modeler uh, of, of cost efficiencies. Uh, so if you know anybody who has sales expertise, you can link me with to see this out fully. Um, that is what I'm interested in um, primarily at, at this time. Thank you.